cussing, fussing, fighting, killing, cheating. Why? The power of sin. The power of sin is what happens. People uh, kill themselves, jump off buildings, cussing and fighting and shooting and gambling and drinking and and sexing and stealing and fussing and cut all of that that is the power of sin because the power of sin reigns in their lives hallelujah confusion is a part of the power of sin being disoriented and not being cognitive of the surroundings that's a part of the power of sin mad at folks can't forgive angry yep. depressed mm-hmm. that's a part of the power of sin mm-hmm. and jesus has come to save us not in some sin because once he saves us from sin that means you can have dominion over all those other things the confusion yes. hallelujah yes the, uh, the 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 lack of self control. Mm. So many people have lack of self control. As soon as they get near whatever they are weak to, there they go. It's like a magnet. Exactly. It becomes their kryptonite. Whatever it is, Woo. they got the cane shepherds, and I can't stop myself from doing it. Jesus said, "With me, if you have the joy of the Lord, then you have Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit in there." Strength. In you, in, in, in having the Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, you have all you need to overcome it all. Right. Hallelujah. You say, well, well, I, I, I have Jesus in my life and I have the Holy Spirit. Yeah, you, you, you do. And guess what? Things come up on us. But I wonder, what are you feeding every day? What are you, what is your life like? Yep. Who are you hanging out with? <laughs> I mean, what, where do you go? What are you doing? Is it television all day? Is not? Is any Bible? Is any me time going down? What are you feeding? Are you feeding the spiritual you, or are you feeding the carnal you? Yeah. Huh? Which one? You know that old story about that there is a, a mountain lion and a and a poodle in each one of us. A mountain lion and a poodle in each one of us. Mm. Different people use various uh, comparisons. I like to use something that's really horrible like a mountain lion and something really horrible like a poodle. Mm-hmm. And now we have that we, we have a tendency to be that mountain lion or that or that poodle and just say a mountain lion is that sinful part of us and the poodle is the spiritual part of us, which one of those would win in a battle, the poodle or the mountain lion? You said, of course the mountain lion won. Really? Really? What if you never fed the mountain lion? What if the mountain lion hadn't eaten in 30 days. Mm. And it's just lying there. See how you get up. But you fed that poodle every day. Mm-hmm. Oh, you, you threw some primary about there to that poodle? You even got you some filet mignon and threw it to the poodle. Mm. You got some of the best. You even got some doggy vitamins. That poodle was just rah, 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 while the mountain lion just lying there. Yep. Can't raise his head. Good analogy. Still, by the same token, that, that, that mountain lion don't have the strength. But that poodle does have the strength to bite that mountain lion everywhere, include the bottom of his seat. And you know what? The reason is, it's the one you fed. Right. That's the strong. The one you fed, that you kept supplied with nutrition, Mm. that you kept feeding. So what part of you are you feeding? Are you feeding the mountain lion in you that's always on a mess? You're always going, you're you're sitting in front of your TV without prayer. You're listening to all this stupid stuff on television. You're going to stupid movies, pumping stupid music 
adding to you that's not building you up. Right. And then you want to cut the uh, thing on Sunday morning and say, let me see what he can do for me. <laughs> so the one you feed is the one that's going to be a champion. If, if the, you feed that poodle in you, you feed that poodle the right stuff, guess what? That's going to be the strongest part of you. Right. And, 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 and a lot of us are feeding stuff that brings no joy, no comfort, no, don't lead us toward God. Is leading us to be more worldly. And the more worldly you become, the more world that begin to saturate in your mind. Your heart becomes more sad. Your, your thoughts, and there you are, you're ready to cuss, fuss, and fight. Mm. You're yeah. ready to cuss, fuss, and fight. Why? Yes. You've been feeding that mountain lion in you all That's this right. time. That's right. That poor poodle is laying over there dying, begging for something to scrap from your table. Wow. Hallelujah. But if we focus on the joy of the Lord instead, instead of what? Instead of all the stuff of the world, if we, if we start hanging with more people that think more like the Lord, more people that pray, more people that talk to you about what we can do for God, more people, I mean, if you hang out with folks that's actually doing something, and a whole lot of folks talking about it, but they ain't doing anything about it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's one thing to have a gym partner that's talking about going to the gym. It's another uh, a thing to have a gym partner say, I'll be by to pick you up. We're on our way. And guess what? You'll go to that gym longer. I don't know about you. I've signed up to gymnasiums that uh, uh, pay that, you know, pay that weekly fee and drive by six months past. I'm saying, so what is something about that gym I remember? Oh, I signed up for that gym six months ago. Yes, I did, and I've been paying on it for six months and never went because I totally forgot because I didn't have somebody to go with me. You got an old saying that if you want to go fast, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, take somebody with you. Hallelujah. And a lot of us, a lot of you don't have spiritual partners to hold you accountable. Mm. You don't have nobody to pick you up and take you to the spiritual gym. Mm. Look at that. You don't affiliate with anybody that can sow into you and help you feed the poodle totally part of you. We got folks that join with feeding the lion, the old negatives, and they tell you if I was like that, I wouldn't take it. I wouldn't do that. If you ain't happy, you need to get out of this. There ain't all this old carnal talk. Hallelujah. But if we focus on the joy instead, that joy can empower us to keep going. The joy of the Lord. If you focus on, I don't care, come what may, I am a daughter of God. I'm a man, a boy of God, and I'm going to keep going in God's direction. Because the joy means a relationship with Christ. Because it can give us hope and a sense of purpose when nothing else seems to make sense. Mm, that's right. You know, there, there's a lot of things that don't make sense. You got people in your family that don't make no sense. What they're doing don't make no sense. People are making such stupid decisions. Yes. It doesn't even make sense to me. Some of the stupid things, homes are breaking up. Kids and parents are fighting and shooting and killing and divorces and all this stuff because of some stupid, stupid, stupid stuff. Right. That's not all about God. It's all about the flesh, how I feel about it. If I, if I, you know, if I, nothing. If you are a saint of God, you go to God and say, Lord, you lead me. Right. I want to be what you want me to be, not where I want to be. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Because the joy, that relationship means that when you got joy in Jesus, when things happen, you go to him to talk about it. And you know, too many of us go to talk about it, and we give him the answer. <laughs> yep. God don't give you the answer just because you go down on your knees. Mm, mm, mm. You can get it then, but too many people are coming up with, with the answer for themselves. I just felt like God, if it, if it ain't in the Bible, it is not leading to some more and more strength. It's not God. Thank you. Hallelujah. 
sometimes God will try to tell you to just go and forgive somebody. You call them and tell them, forgive me, even though they did the mess up. Mm -hmm. That's right. Hallelujah. But God let me know. God let me know. I don't have to say this. No, that wasn't God, sweetie. God is humble. Jesus came down. He humbled himself even unto the death of the cross. And he left here saying, I'm going to wash feet to show you. I want you all to be humble, people. Right. Hallelujah. When we wanted, when we start doing things God's way, we start we start operating within that relationship. And that relationship produces joy. I, I want to be pleasing to you, Lord. I want to be pleasing to you because it gives us hope and a sense of purpose when other things don't make no sense. People say, I don't even know why you're doing that, honey. You say, I'm doing it because this is what God wants me to do. Well, I wouldn't do it that way. If somebody did me like that, well, you know what? I'm not I'm, I'm not living for you, brother. I'm not living for you, sister. I'm living a life pleasing to God. It doesn't make sense. Jesus didn't make sense when he came down here. That's why they killed him. They thought he came down here for something totally different. Jesus, can you see your people? I thought you said you loved the Jews. They're the only getting slaughtered and killed. And Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. I mean, if I was, I would fight, me and my servants. But guess what? That didn't make no sense. That's why they hated him. That's why they killed him. He wasn't doing what they thought he should be doing. Hallelujah. But the joy of the Lord isn't just a feeling or an emotion. Oh, I feel the joy. No, that is not you. What you might be feeling, the Bible that you know, your emotions and your feelings are very deceiving. God, he looks at that as it, it stands up against your actions. Oh, God knows I love him. I told you when I was doing social work. Well, I've done social work with, well, when I was with Child Protective Services, CPS. I would sit with some of these fathers who hadn't seen the kids in years, mm. promising that they're going to go see the kids and take them and pick them up and take them to Disneyland, and kids stand there all dressed up, washed up, and father don't show over and over and over again, and, wow. and promises and promises and promises until the kids go from uh, three years old to eight years old, discouraged. And angry. They meet the dad, and he says, well, my, my kids know I love them. That's, no, that's your own psyche, honey. Whew. They don't know you love them. Thank you. That's your own emotional stupidity. That's what it is, sir. Right. That's you trying to make your own self feel good. Mm -hmm. Your kids are miserable. Right. I told you I had one guy call me, and he was he thought he was impressing me. He said, well, I want you to know I have 13 children by 13 different women. Mm. 13. Mm. And he, you know, he, he, that was his badge of honor. Wow. That was his badge of honor. I said, well, brother, let me ask, let me, let me, let me ask you this. Do you know what those 13 kids want? No, what? I said, all 13 of them would love to have at least one day a week with their daddy. Do you do it? Well, 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 no, but they know I love that. But excuse me, sir. I don't want to hear about your love. Don't you re don't you realize that those thirteen kids don't even know each other? All they know is they have one daddy. Don't you know that they long for one day with you at least a week? Wow. It's not all about how you feel about them. Thank you, brother. It's about how they feel about you. Mm. That's how it is with God. We got these folks, who I feel, I just feel me some Jesus. Oh, well, does Jesus feel you? Mm. Huh? You're a stranger to him when it comes down to his emotions. God wants to be able to say, have you considered my servant? He called Job. In other words, I may have a contact with Job. Hallelujah. It's not just Job, no matter how I feel about Jesus. Jesus, is, God was saying, I have feelings about Job because he's my servant. He's doing what I want him to do, what I want him to do it, and how I want him to do it. Can he say that about us? Mm. Hmm? Good question. Because the joy isn't just feelings or an emotion. Right. It is also a state of being. Mm -hmm. It's just how we roll. 
it's the state of who we are. This is what we do. It's nothing that you put on. I got my joy, my, my joy. Oh, no. Hallelujah. We are told we living in a state of joy, which means a state of a right relationship with Jesus. Mm. Right. He can call on us. Hallelujah. She's love always willing. Lord, show me what to do. God is like saying, I'm tired of showing you what to do. Just go out and start doing it. You ought to know me by now. Okay. You ought to know me by now. The Bible says if you can't figure out what I want you to do, the Bible says you just go find whatever your hands see need to be done. That's when you have a relationship with Christ because you become a worker bee. Uh, when we're filled with God's joy, we're able to do things we never thought possible. When that relationship is precious to you, when you want to be pleasing to him, hallelujah, you start doing things that you never thought you could do, mm -hmm. hallelujah. And you, first of all, we need to start doing something for him that's going to please him. Right. We can see joy in the darkest of time, Ooh. and we can share that joy with others. Yes. Let me tell you something. God doesn't wait until your thing is going right before he tells you to help somebody else. Huh? So true. God wants you to know that, that when, when you have that relationship and people will come to you like, man, woman, how in the world can you be up here uh, uh, so feeling so good? Somebody wrote me, two or three people wrote me something. Recently, I uh, text me saying, Dr. D, you're one of the strongest men I ever met. With all that you're going through, all that you're going through, hallelujah. I don't walk around with my head hanging down. I know that's right. With all, you know, folk threatening my life, busting my windows out of my cars and a thousand other things. I don't even go into that stuff. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why? Because when you're filled with joy, when you're filled with joy, that means that you are, that means you are, the relationship with God to you is important. Yes. When that is important, it means more than windows in a car and anything else in your life that's going wrong. Hallelujah. Because you know you want to be pleasing to God. Yeah, your kids are going crazy. Your husband is a husband who walked off and left you. Money's funny. Hallelujah. You go by the bank and you got nothing but zeros on your account. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you still got joy because you got trust. You got hope in him because you have experience with him. Right. Do you have experience with the blessings of God? Have you been through something that he brought you out of? And he expects you to understand that if I brought you out of that, I can bring you out of this. But I need to, you to grow. I need you to, to grow. I need you to understand that it's not going to be all sunny days and roses and what have you. Hallelujah. God needs you to go through some stuff and still love him. Uh, to be able to take some stuff and shut up your mouth. Stop defending yourself with all that stupid stuff. Right. Be an example. Close your lips. <laughs> Seal it. Raise your hands and say, Lord, help me. Give me the strength. I want to change. I don't want to be the same from this moment. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need to be even in the midst of your problems. God wants you out there showing the difference between you and the sinner. Exactly. Because the strength that you have in the Lord, don't you know it's in contagious when other saints or even sinners see that what you're going through, you're going through stuff that'll break folks down, but you're still talking Jesus. You're still talking about what can I do for somebody else? Right. The best of peace that passes understanding. Because that's, right. that's the kind of peace that the world don't understand. Right. He said, my peace I'll leave with you. Not the world peace. Some of y'all counting on the world in peace. Well, I don't feel this. I ain't got this. And what God is saying, look, do you have my peace or not? That means you're trusting in me. That means you believe in my word. Hallelujah. That's what he's looking for for us. Hallelujah. A relationship that's joy. Joy is not happiness. Happiness deals with the happenings around you. What's happening? If you go up, you're up. If you're down, you're down. That's not joy. Joy means, hey, you know what? I'm a son of God. 
I'm a daughter of God. Oh, I find strength in my relationship to him. What it is, Lord, I'm trusting you. Hallelujah. This is going to be going to conclude, but we're going to continue this, the strength and the joy on next week. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but just lift your hands right where you're at. Lord Jesus, repeat the Lord Jesus. Repeat after me. Restore my joy. Restore my joy. Give me a deeper relationship with you, Lord. Give me a deeper relationship with you, Lord. Help me, Lord God, to be more in tune with your word. Help me to be more, more pleasing to you. More pleasing. And appreciative of your spirit. Let me find folk that will help me grow. Yes, yes. That will help me feed the spiritual part of me. Yes. To pull away from those people that feed the carnal part of me, yes. the worldly part of me. Hallelujah. May I become a vessel of yes. honor. Yes. In Jesus' name. In the name Amen. Of Jesus. Amen. Now I want you out there, if you don't have no Jesus Christ in the pardon of your sin. Hallelujah. Or if you want to be restored to the household of faith, you may have fallen back. The Bible said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth should not perish but have everlasting life. Mm -hmm. And what we used to do, the uh, personal evangelists, if we would say it like this, For God so loved, and we the, and we tell that person to put their name there. For God so loved Janice, for God so loved Curtis, for God so loved John, that if John believed, or if Mary believed, Victoria believed, that she should not perish, but have everlasting life. Do you want everlasting life? Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But Romans 6.23 says, But the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. That's what you want? And St. John 3.16 says, Behold, I'm standing at the door. Jesus is knocking. He's knocking at the back side of the door. He's knocking at the sinner's door. He's knocking. He says that if you open the door, That's right. if you have so. faith to open the door, I'll come in. I'll bring my joy. I'll bring my strength. Yes. I'll bring my salvation Hallelujah. into your life. Hallelujah. So, Lord, repeat after me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, forgive me for my sin. Forgive me for my sin. Forgive me for being a backslide. Forgive me for being Lord a backslide. Jesus, I want you to come into my heart. Come into my heart. And I want you to fill me today with your spirit. Fill me with your and spirit. I want to be saved. I want to be saved. And I want to be used by you, Lord. Yes, Father God. I believe your word. Yes, Lord. That you're knocking at my heart. Yes, Lord. I'm opening my heart's door today. Yes, Lord. Come in, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Save me from my sin. Yes, Lord. Renew me. Yes. Make me a new man. Yes, Lord. Make me a new woman. Yes, Lord. Make me a new boy. Yes, Lord. Make me a new girl. Make me a new girl. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name, I thank you. In, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So if that is you today and you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, 